Drawing trees is one of the hardest things to do well. How much or how little detail is enough? What kind of style should I use? Poorly illustrated can make a drawing look awkward, but if done well, it could really dress up the design, place it in context, and it adds a lot of visual interest to the composition. Another funny reason why you might want to have trees in your drawing is to hide the undercooked part of the design or undesirable part of the building that you don't want people to see. This is kind of like putting hot models in a rendering to take your attention away from a mediocre design. Hi, it's Henry Gao here. I work with architects, interior designers, and developers on storytelling with my hand drawing illustrations. In this video, I'm gonna share with you three style of drawing trees. Stay all the way to the end and I have a special tip on how to integrate trees more naturally in your composition. Style number one is the abstract representation. It's the most diagrammatic way to draw trees and also the fastest as well. This abstract approach works better if your drawing is more on the cue and cartoony side. It's also good if it's part of a conceptual diagram to something else like an axiometric view where a detailed representation of a tree isn't needed. The line work are fairly simple and straightforward. Most are done with a fairly continuous stroke without a lot of ins and out. In this case, less is more. It's actually better to draw as little as you can get away with as long as someone can tell it, it's supposed to be a tree. When you're drawing trees this way, you're not really showing the species of the tree, which probably isn't important. If you need to convey more information about the context of your building, say it's in an area where there are a lot of deciduous or coniferous trees, then the next approach might be better. The second style allows you to represent the species of the tree a little bit more. You should be able to tell if it's a redwood or oak by its shape. It's drawn with a little bit more detail around the edges, and a sense of foliage is also added in here, but not shadow. This way of representation has a bit more realism and is better suited for a perspective drawing. I think it requires a little bit more practice and understanding of the tree anatomy, such as proportion, size, and what the foliage looks like. When I'm drawing trees this way, I like to have a reference image close by. Oftentimes when I'm working with a client, they might have a specific requirement for a certain kind of species to put their building in context. This second approach is what I typically use in my architectural illustrations and I haven't found a need to adding more details. But if you are looking to draw trees with a little bit more realism, then keep watching. This last style of drawing trees is more common for fine art, which is what I grew up learning using pen and ink. This is the most time consuming way to draw trees because the amount of details required is definitely on the high side. What separates this approach from the other two is the addition of how shadow and light are represented. 
Drawing this way, you can communicate a better sense of depth, where the light falls on the foliage and where things are in shadow. This contrast between the highlight and the shade is what gives its three-dimensional quality. In the context of architectural drawing, this is probably not needed for most people. Although before rendering became a thing and then the norm, for hundreds of years, this type of drawing was actually very common and often produced by a professional illustrator whose job was to represent architecture in context. If you are finding this helpful, please remember to hit the like button below. In the description, you can also download my Procreate brushes using this tutorial for free. And if you feel inclined to support my work, you can find my travel pen and ink artwork on Etsy, which are available in black and white prints and a very unique gold for variation. They're great to remind you of your favorite city, a monument, a national park, and also it's a really good gift for a friend that likes to travel. So now you have some options with style and the application. If you're not sure which approach you like the most, try drawing it out with your own hand first and see which style you gravitate more towards to. To help you with this, I've also provided a free template with a free style of drawing in a file so you can trace over as practice on your own. I think this is one of the best way to learn. The link is in the description below as well. As a bonus tip, when planning your composition, try to identify your foreground, midground, and background first. Having a detailed tree and vegetation in the foreground can make your composition more dynamic and it could fill out some negative space that you have in a corner. Mid-ground trees is important to complement the design and architecture, but be careful how much detail you put into it to avoid competing with the design. Background trees are the furthest in your scene. They should be drawn with the least amount of detail. If you put too much detail, they will make the drawing a little muddy. So I hope you found this video useful if you are intimidated to draw trees. 
And in a future video, I will be teaching you how to color on the iPad. So make sure you stick around and subscribe.